Good evening, everyone. Wow, this is a big group. Um, nice to see you. My name is Janelle Riley. I'm an editor at Variety. I'm so, so thrilled to be here tonight with, I, I absolutely adore this film. And um, judging by the sounds I could hear for coming from the screening room, I think you guys do too. Um, at this time, please join me in welcoming tonight's guests. I want to start with the film's director and producer. Uh, he previously produced such films as Match and Destined. Please welcome Matt Ratner. <laughs> Also joining us is an actor who you may have recently seen in such shows as Fosse Verdon, Mindhunter, and For All Mankind, basically my three favorite shows right now. Please welcome Nate Cordry. We have an actress who you might know from Fifty Shades of Grey, Chicago Fire, and the series Lone Star. Please welcome Eloise Mumford. And we have an Emmy-winning writer and actor. He can currently be heard in the number one movie in America, Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, you also know him for his iconic roles on Parks and Recreation and House of Lies. Please welcome Ben Schwartz. And we have an Emmy and Tony award-winning actor, director, writer, producer, author, and host. Very busy man. Um, his iconic roles include 700 Sundays, <laughs> When Harry Met Sally, <laughs> Billy Crystal. I didn't get to Monsters, Inc. I really, I had like a whole thing about Monsters, Inc. I'm, I, I couldn't wait. <laughs> they gave a standing ovation to all of us, by the way. They're just tired. <laughs> They're just tired. All of us. All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thank you guys so much for being here, and congratulations on a Where beautiful movie. Where are we, movie. by the way? Well, funny you would ask. We are at the SAG After Foundation. This is an audience entirely of actors. Yeah. And so I actually always like to start by asking, how did you get your SAG card? What was the job that, that brought that piece of paper to you? Wow. <laughs> um, this is Spinal Tap. You're kidding. Oh, he played a mime. He played a mime yeah. in This is Spinal mime Tap. Mime is money. Mime is my Morty the Mime. Yeah. Yeah. Was that your first move? No, it couldn't have been. No, you were it wasn't my test. first. No, but I, but I think, I think that's what it was. was this, really? Yeah. You didn't need to be SAG to do the Joan Rivers movie? You didn't have to be an actor to do the Joan Rivers movie. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready, baby. This is going to be all night. Yeah. Big Daddy had wine. Um, <laughs> you got yourself Big Daddy. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a great one. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think yeah. it was the, I think it was probably that, but then it was after. I had the after card first. Sure. And then, and then, because this was before they merged. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they merged. They merged. It's now SAG after. I, I had no, I had no yes. idea. Only one dues that you have to pay, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a bonus. <laughs> yeah. So I think I th it, it was something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Ben, for you? Uh, I actually remember it. It was a little thing, but uh, it meant a lot to me. I played uh, Butch Cassidy in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. You were so good in I that. I was so fucking good right. in that. <laughs> when you jumped off the cliff. Oh, my goodness. Fuck. And that soundtrack. Oh, my God. Raindrops keep falling. Did the raindrops rain actually fall on your head? Yeah, yeah, They yeah. fell on your head. So that's, I got inspired right. to write that song because I was out in the rain and they were falling on my head. <laughs> And he's a kid. I was a baby, by yeah, the way. Four I years was old. a baby, and you wouldn't expect me to be that strong or beautiful, no. but I nailed it. You did. Um, uh, I think my. Fr I think. Um, <laughs> thank you, Billy. I yeah. think. You weren't even born when that movie came out. Is the no, crazy no, no, thing. no, 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 it wasn't. Yes. <laughs> um, I think uh, I did a Publix commercial, which is a supermarket in. Uh, I went to Tampa, Florida, and I'll never forget it because I'm I'm from uh, uh, the Northern Bronx. I've never been in first class before, and per SAG stuff, you're allowed to fly first class if you get a commercial. So I was very excited, and I was the last row of first class. I'll never forget it. 
and you get a meal on your I was like oh baby and it was breakfast and they come to me and I'm the last person they come to and I go I'll have the eggs they go we're all out and I, go, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like okay this is my first time in first class she's like ha ha I said I guess I'll have cereal she goes I'm so sorry we ran out of milk I go can I have half and half with it and so I had ha- I had no. cereal and half and half <laughs> Uh, just because I'd never been, but that, I think it was that. But I remember I was doing uh, small bits on Conan, and there was a scene where a bunch of extras and I, like I was an extra, would we would run, uh, we're following Conan, it was for his 10th anniversary, Conan O'Brien had a show in New York. And um, so uh, I remember because I had my SAG card, I was allowed to be near the front of the line, really? near Conan, as opposed to people who didn't, were not there. It was a very interesting thing. So I remember it being like a big moment that like, do you have, like, yeah, yeah, and it was like a big moment. But I think those commercials i did a bunch of commercials yeah. at the beginning uh to try to get uh any money to survive yeah yeah, yeah. eloise um they made a tv show from the movie crash that was called right. crash oh, it was yeah. a long time ago um it was my first i was still in college um the one and only job i've booked off a of self-tape was <laughs> that job <laughs> um i was i was very young i was very excited and I showed up, and I could tell I didn't quite look like what they thought I looked like. But I was like, whatever, it's too late. I'm here. Uh, I filmed in New Mexico, and I was like staying in a hotel on the edge of a highway. And I was like, oh, this is the life. This is the life. <laughs> yeah. uh, I uh, did a, uh, a bite and smile commercial for Pizza Hut in 2001, which is no dialogue. You just you have to bite it. Show him, Nate. Show him, no, baby. Give it to him. Don't you dare. Give it to him. Put me on the Give spot. Give your bite and smile. I did it once, and I'll never do it again. <laughs> uh, I was uh, I was um, uh, interning. Oh no, excuse me. I was um, I was working like part time at an ad agency, and there was a really lovely art director who was very kind to me, and he would let me go on auditions uh, during my lunch break, and he said um, he said one day, do you like pizza? I was like, yeah. And he said, okay, uh, show up at the audition tomorrow between two and four. You don't know me. Just bite the pizza and it's the easiest thing to do. I said, okay, great. So I show up and he's there. And, and so the casting person has me, you know, bite a piece of pizza and <laughs> smile like a fucking dumb dumb. <laughs> and, and I didn't, I didn't, I tried to play it cool, but I was so anxious. I like looked at him and I was about to say something. And he was like, don't fucking, you don't know me, idiot. And I just sort of said goodbye, and I got the job. And that guy, his name was Van Graves, and he was a reservist in the, in the Marine Corps. And he came back, he was in the first, he was in Desert Storm, he came back, and he was a, um, an art director for BBDO in New York, and he gave me my first job. So thank wow. you, Van Graves, wherever he is now. I was also Sundance and Butch Cassidy and the oh, Sundance I remember you. We had so much fun. We had so, so much many fun. Laughs, so oh. many laughs. We were was great in that movie. <laughs> Some of my best friends are actors. <laughs> uh, I actually want to start at the beginning with Matt because um, you've been a producer on several films, but this is actually your feature directorial debut, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> What was it about this script that, that spoke to you so strongly that you, you knew this was the one you had to direct? Yeah, you know, I, I'd been looking for something for a long time, uh, and I just always had been drawn to stories that blended humor and pathos. I've always felt like that was true to life. I've always been interested in stories that were about life. And uh, from the first time I read it, you know, I thought there were moments that absolutely, you know, made me laugh out loud and, and hopefully had the same impact on you. But it was also, it, it was about something, and it dealt with... Uh, you know, things like the, the nature of regret, the nature of choices we make in, in a way that I felt very powerfully. I got my hooks into it and I felt like hopefully would, uh, would speak to actors and eventually speak to an audience. And um, where did you even start with the casting? I'm guessing you had to start with Marty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so Billy, how did the script find its way to you and, and what spoke to you about this role? Um, that it was a very unique kind of character. Um, the script was in, was in good shape. Uh, a lot different, actually, than it is now. And, but, but there was something about this guy that I felt I really was interested in, I, and it was different for me. It was, I kept saying, this could be, like, I kept thinking of Jack Lemmon in, in yes. this. And I said, well, he was such a hero to me. Yes. And um, I had had a discussion with, I think, maybe in the top five talented people I'd ever met, and that was Mickey Rooney. And, and Mickey Rooney... Seven years in a row was the number one box office uh, champion with the Andy Hardy movies. He could sing, he could dance, he did Shakespeare, 
played instruments, drums, and he, he was amazing talent. So I met him very late in his life at an event at the Academy um, that I hosted for the 50th anniversary of It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. And Mickey was in that movie, and he came, and Jonathan Winters was there, and it was, it was pretty great. So I was talking to him, and one of my favorite things that he ever did was the jockey in Black Stallion. Yes, oh my God. And he's a pretty, and, and we were talking about it, I said, and he said, you'll get a role like that. You just wait for your aging jockey role. Wow. And when this came, uh, you know, I get, fortunately still get a lot of stuff, and sometimes you give it the, you know, the full Pelosi, and go, yeah, I hate that thing. <laughs> And then, <laughs> and <laughs> this one I really felt, oh, I liked it. So then Matt, Matt came out when, uh, when I s expressed great interest, and Matt came out, and we met in my office for, uh, I don't know, a couple hours, talked mm -hmm. about it, and I, I gave my notes what I thought it could be, that it wasn't yet, that would make me comfortable. But then I said, um, who's, who's going to be Scott? So he, he showed me four guys, um, all tremendously talented, and they're reals, and the only one I recognized um, was Ben, uh, but we still had, we'd never met. Really? And I looked at everybody's work and everybody, and this is a very particular animal, a stand-up comic, mm -hmm. especially one who doesn't do well, because he's not, no, because no, he's not hard. connected yeah. with himself yet. So who's gonna make that connection for him is this, strange guy um, who's got his own problems and he's disconnected but yet they affect each other and so I, I said well let me look so I looked at all the stuff and and he played this rabbi in a movie called this is where I leave you and he's a funny rabbi and he'd get up in front of the congregation can I get a Shabbat Shalom and it made me laugh <laughs> But there was a sadness about him because he keeps getting teased yeah. by everybody, by Tina Fey and Jason Bateman. And, and then I said, well, I love this guy. And then I watched him on House of Lies. And he, he has great skill. And he's, he's silky smooth, but yet he's vulnerable. And he he's, feels like this guy. And then we, we talked on the phone. He was in Atlanta making a film for like an hour or something. And then he flew out to California. We met for two or three hours. And we just fell into each other as people, but also as Marty and, and, and Scott. I could see it. I, I felt it. So I called Matt and I said, I'll do the movie only if Ben plays wow. Scott. And, um, and you know, it, Brad it, or Leo would have been great, but I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Frank Stallone, Frank Stallone is such a different type. Oh, God. And, but he sings great. great sing. And uh, great but so then, then that, that was it. So then Ben and I uh, actually were together before he was with with Matt. We yep. had spent some yeah. time together, and we came to Matt with ideas, 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 and then here we are. I mean, what's that like for you, Ben, to like you know get this call that is saying Billy Crystal will only do this movie if you do it's, it? It's it's ludicrous. It's surreal. It's someone that no, Ludicrous was not available. Oh right, Ludicrous <laughs> is unavailable. <laughs> Who was, was a in whole Crash? Different way to go. Crash Ludacris Crash. was in the movie Crash. Full That's circle, true. Del That's Close. True. That's true. Um, but um, <laughs> we are talking to actors here. Uh, but uh, it's amazing because for me, it's I've watched Billy my entire life as an actor, as a philanthropist, as someone looking out for the homeless with comic relief, as someone who hosted the Oscars. Are the Oscars are Billy Crystal uh, for me? So it's it's unbelievable to meet him is you know when you see when I saw Billy for the first time it's still like oh my god that's Billy fucking Crystal <laughs> well so, no, I wasn't fucking no 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 no, <laughs> no I was alone no you were totally by yourself um, but it was it was a uh, it was a tr it was a wonderful moment and then when that goes away and you're talking to him as a human being and we're connecting on what this piece is and just becoming two uh, Jewish New Yorkers and talking and it was just a it was so wonderful, and um, I would have done the worst written commercial with Billy. It, we just happened to have a wonderful script to work off of, but it, whatever he wanted me to do, I would have done. It doesn't matter, but it just happened to be that we had this thing, and we had the, the same ideas for the script. Hey, this is a really fun script, but I think we need to change these things. Billy's like, yeah, this is how we could do it. We started talking. We started getting excited about that together, and then we were able to talk to Matt. We were able to talk to the screenwriter, Peter Hoare, who's a wonderful, wonderful New York writer, and uh, through that, we we kind of, we it was, uh, it was, it was a very lucky and fortunate 
unfortunate thing because this is, you know, is a lower budget film. These are harder to make. These are harder to get people like you guys to see. So it was because everybody on stage here loved the movie that we did it. You know what I mean? This, it, it wasn't yeah. even a lower budget. It was a no budget film. <laughs> but the proof of it is, and, and to Matt's credit, when you look at the screen, the whole $84 of the budget is up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all on the screen. All 84 it's bucks. It's all up there. I'm actually, I was actually kind of trying to wreck my brain. Have you ever had a, a significant part in an independent film before? Yes. It, it, I mean, it's, it's actually lower than an independent film. Yeah. And, I, and it was a movie called Small Apartments. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's, it's a quirky, nutty, weird little movie. Yeah. Um, the budget was really like $500,000. Um, it's Jimmy Kahn, myself, um, Matt Lucas, uh, who's great from Little Britain. Yeah. Johnny uh, Knoxville, Martha Plimpton. Mm. It, I mean, it's got a great cast, and it's a weird murder mystery. Yeah. And I played this really strange um, character who's a investigator for the fire department, but sort of becomes like a Columbo. And I and I actually entertained approaching um, NBC with, well, I, would you want to do two Columbos a year with me? Really? Because you know, I, I, I love this. You would this, play Columbo. I love this character so much. Oh so gosh. that yeah. So that so it was, I loved it because the work was good. It's a weird, strange little movie. You could probably get it on iTunes. Um, and so when this came up, plug this movie, Billy. No, yeah. No. <laughs> so what I loved about. You killed him off. He can't make a series out That's of this right. one. That's right. So <laughs> what I loved about this and it was it's all about the work. It's all about getting everybody loving the movie that you're making. And all of us in the cast did and all of us knew our roles and all of us um, helped make this movie. Um, but, you know, when it's led, um, you'd never know that it was the first time he directed yep. something and with a, a light hand, trusted us, um, a very good young DP, um, and you know it was. Re I loved doing them because it, at this point, to me, it's all about the character, the work, the aging jockey, the all of that. Is your choices become really easy ones when you have good stuff to do? Mm -hmm. And I loved being this guy, this Marty who has no last name. It's That's it's right. you know, we couldn't find a last name that we could clear, so he's just he's just Mar he's just Marty. And um, so it, it's, um, to me, it was uh, a really joyous acting experience uh, working with Ben and Matt on this, one of my favorite experiences I've ever had, really. Yeah. Really, because it was about the work. And Eloise, how did the script find its way to you, and how'd you go about landing the role? So I worked with Rick Rosenthal, who's one of the producers on the film, um, and Noah Rosenthal, who's the DP, uh, his son, uh, a long time ago on a little, even smaller, tiny, tiny, tiny movie. Um, and so he, uh, I, so I first found the script through him and Matt and I um, FaceTimed, Skyped, whatever, uh, and talked about Becky and, and yeah, and it all just happened from there. I mean, honestly, the the thing about movies like this is it's just a domino effect the second you see that these these two were already involved and i was like i don't i don't i mean i'll read the script but <laughs> i i will would do anything to be there so um i just felt really lucky to be involved and was it a yeah. meeting over Skype or like an audition? It was just a meeting. Oh, wow. Okay, because yeah. I was going to say there's another self-taped role, technically. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's true. No, no, we just talked We talked a lot about Becky. It was important to me to f uh, figure out a way to flesh her out more, to be really honest. Um, you know, so often, especially female girlfriend roles, uh, I'm sure all the women in the room can know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. You have to find a way to uh, encourage everyone involved to allow there to be more to that part than just the the girlfriend or the ex-girlfriend. Um, so it was, it, was, it was a conversation about that and, and what we could bring to her that would make, because obviously he's still pretty obsessed in some way with her. She is with him, certainly. And what is that tie? And, and how can we make that more, more significant than um, just a symbol? I have to say, I really liked your husband. I hope things worked out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, uh, apropos of, of what we're talking about, about as far as knowing the material and the, and the script and, and who you are in it, Nate and I um, had one scene together. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. Um, and, and we had one little moment at the wake 
but looking across the room like this. And so you have to fill in a lifetime um, with someone you hardly know. Um, and it's a, you know, he's such a great actor. And it, and it's, and it just, it was my final day of shooting. Uh, and to end that way was like a really perfect timing um, for the character. That was my last appearance in the scene shooting. with him. She, yeah, oh. and this is last appearance in the film. Um, and uh, you know, but that's that's when the script is right, director's right. You know who you are, and the other actor is right with you every step of the way. And it was a thrill to do that that moment with him. Nate, was it hard for you to be mean to Billy Crystal, even though he's Marty? <laughs> Um, well, I needed to meet Billy before I accepted the role. He flew out to me. He sat down. <laughs> it was a long... And I made him wait. He did. <laughs> like he did. Warren Michaels did, you know. Um, <laughs> no, I, uh, I, was, I was very anxious, obviously, that day. I was, I was, um, I was prepared, uh, but nervous and scared. And um, it's a lot. That scene was, uh, was a lot. And we, we didn't know each other at all, so... Um, you just sort of have to jump off the cliff and uh, trust your partner, but uh, there isn't <laughs> a better partner to put your trust in than Billy Crystal. So it was, as, as the cameras rolled and Matt yelled action, it became very easy. Um, but I had a lot of anxiety leading up to that day and that scene, but the actual work was effortless um, and very real. I felt uh, really connected to you. Um, we were just, Two actors sort of hitting the tennis ball, and and and, and to do that in a in a, uh, in a film is really hard. I haven't had that experience. I don't know if many of you have, but there's so much that gets wrapped into the production of a film, and it's hard for me to really, really give in and and release the noise that's in my head and uh, just look at the actor across from me and and live in the moment. It's very it's hard. And that day was, wasn't was hard when, when we were calling action. And it was so windy and really? freezing cold. Oh, yeah. It was like a, in the teens, right? Yeah. Matt? It was the hardest scene to color because it was so windy. The, so the clouds kept moving and, and it was impossible. Really? Uh, yeah, in this neighborhood where we're in Jamaica? We we're in Queens? <laughs> no, 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 Jamaica, Jamaica Queens. Queens. And, oh. Right? Yeah. No, it was, it's no joke. It was freezing. Montego Bay and... Yeah. And... Um, and that little boy was having the. I he was having was a hard first, time. Yeah. He was his was his, his first movie. Yeah, the kid who plays the. the yeah. Dancer. It was it was one it's of my favorite kid. actually Billy moments from the the shoot. Um, you know it's the it's Billy's last day. It's this incredibly tough scene. You know Nate's actually the third person you know uh, that, that we cast because I was so worried about that part because, you know, that that scene done poorly turns into like a Eugene O'Neill play gone wrong, um, and so <laughs> finding someone who would sort of play against that and and, and both. Both Eloise and Nate, I think, you know, it's appropriate you talk about tennis because Ben and Billy are brilliant, but if they don't have anybody to hit the ball mm -hmm. back and forth with, it doesn't matter. And so getting people like them engaged in the project and engaged early made, made a huge, huge difference. Uh, but that last, that day, Billy's last day, this kid is a very sweet kid, and, you know, I didn't have any animals on my first film, so I had a kid. Uh, <laughs> and Billy is, is pouring himself into this thing, and, and you, you can just tell on set how much he's putting into it. And this kid just can't show up at the door. Just, it's like, show up when we cue you, and he just can't do it. And we try, and one of my producers, Gabby's literally on the floor with him, trying to talk him into just, hey, when the nice man waves at you, go to the door and hug Nate. Uh, and finally, Billy comes in and manages to siphon off the emotional reservoir he's digging into and starts doing the Mike Wazowski voice. And he says, you know, hey, kid, you, you know, do, do you know, do you like Monsters, Inc.? He said, yeah, sure. He says, well, you know, I'm Mike Wazowski. Do you know who Mike Wazowski is? I, I pull up my phone. I put Google a picture of Mike. I hold it up. He says, you know, I'm Mike, you know, Mike Wazowski would really love it if you would come to the door when the nice lady tells you to. <laughs> a and without missing a beat, the kid looks up at Billy and goes, I like the blue guy better. <gasps> <laughs> How dare he? Oh. He'll never work in this town again. <laughs> If you, if you guys haven't seen, uh, uh, one of the things I love about Nate is that not only is he unbelievably funny, but he picks such cool and interesting roles mm -hmm. and challenging roles. And the thing, if you ever see uh, Nate Corgi act, is he's so comfortable. When you're when the camera's rolling or whenever I've seen you in something, man, it's just like he makes the audience comfortable when he's on camera because he's so in it and he's so committed that you just can't wait to see what he does. And I love the choices you make and the roles you choose 
also are things that you're like, oh fuck, you can do this and that. It's very, it's he's he's put together such an impressive career, but also he it looks like you continue to challenge yourself and take things that you wouldn't think, and you just nailed. It. I'm very impressed you, with all man. the stuff Thank you've done, you. man. Thank you're you very, very you're incredible. That's very kind of you. And it never occurred to me you guys actually do look alike. When I found out you were playing his son, I was like, that's actually brilliant casting. Had anyone ever told you you resemble the Billy Crystal? <laughs> no, I get, uh, <laughs> you know what I get a lot? Not so much anymore. Kevin Spacey. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Don't. Ooh. Don't. Um, are people like, <laughs> <laughs> not in this building. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, no, well, now I'm that you've said it, I see it. Draw <laughs> <laughs> well, this on yourself. Yeah, Try to unsee it. I unsee I it. I did. Unsee can't. it. You can't unsee it now. <laughs> but no, I, I, I never had. Uh, no one, no one gave him the Billy Crystal thing. No. Now you'll no. get it. Yes, Hopefully, exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Matt, um, I, I kind of love that you made a movie about a stand-up comedian, but you cast Billy Crystal as a dermatologist. <laughs> was, that, was that sort of intentional that you, you know, and it, it must be hard when you're sort of teaching him comedy. You know, but I don't teach him comedy. That's true, you <clears> teach him life. I teach him life. That's what I liked about it. I don't play like an old comic. Yeah. Well, you know what you do, kid? When you get out there, you set it up right, right? <laughs> then wait, wait, wait. You got him in your hand. Then you hit him with the punchline. It's, <laughs> it's not... It's, it's not that. I would 100% pay not. to see that yes. movie, by so the way. So would I. Sequel. I would 100%. Are yeah. there any writers in the brother. audience? <laughs> it was a very serious set. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's funny. One of, one of the things that was really tremendous about everyone on stage and really you know the entire cast of the film was that it was always driven by story everyone saw the film the same way whether it was it was billy and ben in the script stage whether it was, it was nate and eloise after they came on board it was all about um telling the story the same way and what makes the story better and, and one of i think billy's most perceptive notes the original version of the scene that's in the car um aside from it not being in the car which we've t talked about before is that uh there was a bit where Marty talks about the ones, the guys who are real, and he starts invoking past comedians. Starts, starts talking about Dangerfield and these other comics, and, and something you know, B Billy said was, the minute I start talking about comedians, mm -hmm. it's Billy Crystal, not Marty. A and the fact that every choice that, that everyone on this stage made was about what serves the story, I thought was, you know, as a director, yeah. it's just a joy to, to be a part of. I have a question from the audience, and I apologize in advance if I butcher anyone's name. Um, is it uh, Julian Garcia? Hey, uh, Hi, wants Julie. to know how many scenes, well, actually, wants Billy Crystal wants to know if you'll consider making 700 Sundays into a scripted feature film, because he loves the special. Mm. Uh, and for everyone else, how many scenes were 100% improvised? <laughs> no scenes were 100% improvised, and no actors were harmed in the making of this <laughs> film. Um, th w I wrote uh, a script for um, full blown story for 700 Sundays. Um, but to me, the uniqueness of telling it in one always seemed the, the proper way to do it. But there was a, the original script was called Consider the Rose, <clears throat> which is what the old jazz musician uh, teaches me when I'm in grief when my father dies, to consider the rose that you clip off the rose and a new bud grows. So consider the rose. That, and that's, what, that's where that came from. Um, but um, that was w still one of the great uh, joys in my life was doing that on Broadway and around the country a couple of times. I mean, you must have, you could probably do it right now because you must have done it so many times. You probably still have it memorized. The set, ba the set <laughs> slowed down back right? yeah. there. Oh, no, I couldn't. Shit, I couldn't. I just couldn't. <laughs> no. yeah. We got a new car. <laughs> it was 19... Cut to two hours later, you're sweating. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and you guys just all sit there. I would love it. I would love that. <laughs> right? uh, we have a question from, I think it's Dana or Dana. Uh, it's actually for Ben. Um, how has your training at Upright Citizen Brigade helped you through your career? Nate, did you also, were you also a UCB person? I was, yes, okay. in New York, yeah. So did you? Both? Yeah. Were you, you before me? Uh, I was there like 2001, two. Right before me, yeah. yeah. yeah um, uh, Upright Citizens Brigade is a theater that was in New York, and it started on 22nd Street, then 23rd, then it went to 26th. That's where I caught it, on Chelsea, in 26th and 8th. Uh, and it was, uh, I mean, it's, uh, for, for me and how I started, it was everything. And I was, 
I was so in love with improv. I mean, I still am. Uh, we're doing these specials for Netflix. Me and Thomas Middleditch recorded three specials for Netflix, which will be one of the first ever recorded long-form improv comedy specials. So for people who've never seen improv, hopefully this will get them interested and they'll, they'll learn about it. But um, I was obsessed, man. I took I, I was an intern there so I can afford classes. And then I was a bartender so I can make a little money on the side. Then I helped book the touring company. I would cold call colleges for them and just try to get the UCB touring company booked. But in terms of how it affects um, everything, uh, it has affected my writing. Uh, I've, you know, I, I write scripts for studios and stuff. It has affected my uh, acting, and it is something that I continue to do because I'm so passionate about it. But uh, UCB, the whole idea, the biggest thing that you grasp from that outside of the idea of yes and, which I think you guys have probably heard, is just listening. I think so much of acting is listening. And when Billy and I are doing these scenes, we talk about it all the time. If you just keep your ears open and you're listening to the other person, you react in a real way. And all of a sudden, the life, even if you're saying the words that are on the page, the light start, the life, the life of the scene starts breathing a little bit more. And you feel like a camera just happens to be in the room while two human beings are talking. So I think listening is a big thing, uh, for me at least, uh, in, in terms of acting. It's a huge uh, listening and reacting. Um, because if all you're doing is saying words that you've memorized, uh, I think you can feel it a little bit in the performance. But the more and more that you get loose with it and you feel like you're really listening and responding, um, I think there's something in that. Uh, Nate, any, for you as well? Um, yeah, w one of the things that I took from it was always tr uh, your goal is to make your partner um, look yeah. better than you. Uh, you're, every time you step on stage, um, you have to make sure that you take care of the person opposite you. See, I don't uh, feel that way. <laughs> Billy's a beast. I'm just about me. Billy's a beast. Big Daddy yeah. thinks about Big Daddy. God. Yeah. Big Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Big Daddy. He made us all call him that on set. It was really weird. No. Oh, it worked for me. <laughs> for my character, but that was yeah. it. Ben, are you, uh, are you at the Largo against him? Yeah, we're doing a benefit for the Australian Fires this Sunday. Oh, no. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're doing two shows. We've already raised $25,000 for them, which is great. Yeah. And then uh, we do uh, we do a show in a week, but that's all that. So if if you enjoy long in, long form improv and or Ben, uh, he does a <laughs> he does a show uh, with Thomas Middleditch. Ditch. It's going to be the Netflix specials, but it really it's it's one of the unique things about living in L.A. Right, is you have access to such tremendous performers and 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 their stuff's really special. So if you have a chance, Thanks, do go Matt. see it. It's very nice of you. Uh, we actually induced uh, labor in our cinematographer's wife. This really? is true. Yeah, we went, Yeah, it's you know Noah's wife gave birth the day. Oh after. yeah, the cinematographer came to my show and his wife was pregnant. Wonderful wife was pregnant, and she was laughing really hard. And then it, oh. <laughs> then the next day she had a baby. It was either that night. Yeah, she literally it. it Talk helped. about an improv. Hey, <laughs> boom! Bring in Big Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys. So also, there were so many strange connections in this movie. Yeah, Noah. Uh, used to carpool with my daughter Lindsay. Drove him to middle school. Really? Yeah, when he was a kid. And a lot of the movie is shot in my hometown, which was just by coincidence. And um, the funeral is in a temple I was born misfit in. I swear. That's eerie. I said so. I said to Matt, so so where's the funeral? It's at uh, Temple Emmanuel. I was born misfit there, and I lived around the corner. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. Full circle. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, we have a question from Jesse Bloom, who has really nice handwriting. Oh, no. Uh, Hi, Jesse. Pratt. Hi, Jesse. <laughs> uh, wants to know, uh, for Billy, your fabulous career has had so many facets. Can you share something that happened that was disappointing, but you ultimately learned from? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, oh, there's so many. Uh, I had a variety series on NBC in 19... Ba -ba -ba -bum. <laughs> um, 1980, right after Soap went off the air. And, oh. and um, uh, Brendan Tartikoff brought me to NBC to do a variety series. Um, and most of the country only knew me from a Soap, you know. So, and I had, I had done one HBO special. And so he knew what I could do and trusted me with this variety show, which was on Saturday nights at 10 o'clock on NBC, opposite. Fantasy Island and uh, Love Boat, which was on ABC, which was a killer, and we just, it was really hard to put together a show, and we, we did six shows, <clears throat> and they only aired two, and, and uh, it, was, it was hard, it was really hard. When your name is the title, mm. 
and you and you get canceled and it you feel like everybody in America goes no and it's a hard, that was a hard thing but it just made me work harder and figure out what didn't work shows like that need time to breathe mm -hmm. and it, it, they need to you know they need to just stay till you find it till you find it so it needed at least a season um, to find itself so that was a that was a big disappointment that, but I learned how to work even harder and not take it personally if you can possibly not take it personally yeah. and and make yourself better and surround yourself with people who help you be better uh, by the way, your movie is opening in theaters this weekend. And, and Friday, on this Friday, everywhere. VOD up, and in theaters. Yes, yeah. up against Fantasy Island. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? <laughs> <laughs> My God. Lady. <laughs> oh. You don't understand. You say something like that to a Jew <laughs> who believes in Ken horrors. You just put a Ken horror on it. I just said Fantasy Island killed us, and then, well, you're opening again Fantasy Island. No, 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 they opened last week. You'll be okay. Oh. You're, but you're, they're you're, still out there. <laughs> so Sonic the Hedgehog. That's the one you really got to look out for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, our direct competition is Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> See, movies like this need a lot of love. Yep. They're made with love. Yes. But they, the, and you know, we got to, just the fact we got it made is the victory. And that people will see it is the victory. The fact that you guys saw it is a huge I, victory. I swear. For us. To hear you Sincerely. like it. And, and this, and I, I said this the other night on uh, the Corden show, you know, the people, well, it's a little movie. No, this is a big movie because it's a big powerhouse emotionally. Yeah, it didn't have a big budget, but it has so much to it that it's a big movie. It, 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 people carry it around with them. I, I, I'm getting responses for, thing, for, for this movie from, from people I haven't heard from in, in years. I saw it, I saw it at this festival, I saw it that, it's great. And that means the world to us. So if we can find our way into a you know, couple of more theaters around the country and then people mostly will stream it and see it, we already won. We already won just getting it done. There's a very uh, interesting thing that's happening right now because of all the streaming networks and all that where it's, there's so much choice and you are just, there's an onslaught of content at all times that when you make a movie like this, you just want, you, you, we all believe in it, you know what I mean? We really enjoy it. It's like, how do you get people to care about it like we care about it? And it's a, it's a harder thing now that there's so much there's so much always. So things like this, or Matt, one of the incredible things Matt did is Matt went to one billion festivals with this movie <laughs> uh, and did Q&As at every single one and really pushed it out to the point of getting us a distributor. Now now people can see it. So it's like these little steps. And then uh, w uh, one of the great things that, w that I feel fortunate to be a part of this film is I think Billy Crystal gives one of the best yep. performances he's given, and it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So how do we make sure that people... Get to see that and are aware of that. And Billy's having this beautiful, as you say, uh, you know, career 2.5. Like, he just keeps going. He's, he's having such a beautiful run. So uh, it feels special and important and uh, to show people, like, what Billy's done in this is well, a we piece all of did it as well. It. But what's, what you, how you can help us is tell people about yes. it. Email people about it. Post something. Tell the other SAG members about it. Um, that, that, you know, we're all actors. And... And we just happen to be in this movie. So tell your fellow actors that there's good work in this movie and you should go see it and support it. Because these little movies, what, what, there's no superheroes in this. We're, no, we're all from the same planet in this movie. <laughs> there's, there's no asteroid coming to get us. None of us have <laughs> shields and t we don't turn into big green monsters. Until you see the next guy. <laughs> we're, just, we're, just, we're just schleppy little people trying to find our way in this world yeah. in this movie. And so that's, what, that's what's important about yeah. it. So when you say it's not a little movie, this is a big fucking movie to me. And, and because we all poured our hearts in it, and what's more important than that? Mm -hmm. And you do, sure, no, no. step on applause. And obviously we have very talented members of the cast here, but your entire cast is outstanding. Eloise, I was talking about the gentleman who plays your husband. You know, Jed just Bellman? <laughs> right? Isn't that even jo yeah. John Bellman? Sorry, John, John. Bellman. Who was in Tootsie also. He was hilarious he was in Tootsie incredible on Broadway. Who was he in Tootsie? On, on Broadway. He plays I the guy that. who's like, a, he pretends like he's really dumb and he's on stage like I this. Love that guy. He that's him. He crushes John Bellman. Yeah. 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 Yes, that's exactly that's who he is. 
Jesus. He's amazing. I wondered who. And yeah. If I can say something about Eloise real quick. So one of the hard things, as Nate and Eloise can probably tell you, is that in a movie like this, and anybody who's done a guest spot or anything like that, you're coming into a movie that like Billy and I have been working every single day on, and then you're forced with this idea of being like, all right, now you have to do this tremendously emotional scene without knowing the crew, without knowing anybody, jump in there. And one of the first, might be the first thing that Eloise did was a shot. You remember that shot when we were in the mall? That was a live fucking mall. And we didn't, like, it was a mall that was moving, and there was a one shot that brings up Eloise, and her and I meet, and it's supposed to be this, we haven't seen each other in years, and Eloise has to bring all the emotion, all the things her character has been thinking of, and without any time to rehearse, and with the, we said a hello and tried to talk once, but she crushed it, man. She's so powerful in that, and she, that's a, mostly a one or until we until we uh, have our plant our feet, and it's just such a tremendous amount of pressure, and it shows you how good Eloise is that she crushes it. She's unbelievable in it. So it's it's a huge hard thing for for that, and she was amazing. Yeah. Matt, what, how, how many shooting days was it? Uh, 21 here. Or 20, 21 in New York. 21 days. Yeah, w one, we did one day in LA. Right. And I, I did worked, 21 of those? I worked 12 days, right? I think 10. It, 10? 10. It was 10. And it, and it was the days. first 10. Uh, yeah. So we, 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 you know, the vagaries of scheduling, we shot Billy out first. And then the first scene we shot, we did it, we had to hub it over Thanksgiving. And the day, day our, so we had an 11th day. And day 11 was the scene at the temple. And Ben, who, who I think does such sort of beautifully subtle work in that scene, I don't know if you remember this, he kept coming up to me afterwards because Ben and Billy, as, as you can see, have some natural chemistry together. Uh, <laughs> and Ben came up to me and he said, Billy's gone, I'm so sad. <laughs> and I was like, it's fine. It's He's, true. <laughs> but, but I mean, he was really, as, as a, not just as an actor, as a human, sort of devastated to not have, have Billy around. I felt so close to everybody and, and so satisfied I flew back to Los Angeles. They're wrapping with a night exterior yeah, man, establishing shot, right? We're in a sushi, it's playing for a sushi bar. Right. And the scene that ended up being cut. And I Skyped. I oh, know this is when we were at the house. Oh, uh, we were at the house. At, this at is the, the house. night exterior. Yeah, the yeah, house. Before, yeah. Uh, we wrapped uh, New York photography. Right. And so I Skyped, um, and I had on my Marty clothes. I had that, that great little pork pie hat it's on unfair. just to be there with everybody on the phone to say that's a wrap. So that's how, that's how close I felt to everybody and to this, to this character, this guy with no last name. And <laughs> Look, the movie's budget was so low we couldn't, couldn't afford, afford a last, afford last, last name. name. <laughs> I'm that's sort of like, <laughs> there's just me and Dondi. I don't think... <laughs> Dondi doesn't have a Gandhi last name. Doesn't have a last you really name. couldn't clear a last name? That's why? No, we went through... Yeah, we, we went through a couple. Bunch. And then we, nothing you know. made sense. I said, you know what? He's just Marty. Just Marty. And, and it also, yeah. because the tweet shows up at the end, it felt like yes. it would have been... You know, to sort of introduce a last name when it's never referred to would have been distracting. But, you know, it, it, what Billy's talking about with, you know, with, with, with Skyping in, and it's... I've sort of tried to make it a policy to not work with assholes. Um, I learned that lesson the hard way once. And Ooh, names. It's Just never. Kidding. Cannot uh, and, wait. <laughs> and, and, and it is, especially on these movies where, where and they've all talked about it, it, it everybody's doing it for, from Billy to, to, to Ben to Eloise to Nate to the PA to the gaffer to me. Everyone's doing it because they care about it and love it. And there's just no room uh, on these movies for, for ego in that sense. You, we, we don't have the time, we don't have the money, we don't have the days. So everybody's got to come ready to play and ready to work. Uh, and I remember one of the first things I said to Billy when, when I met with him was, I think we create a safe environment for actors to do their best work, and the hummus is going to be from Costco. And if it doesn't <laughs> work that the hummus is from Costco, this just isn't the right movie. Um, and to, to <laughs> and, and so we ended up getting Whole Foods hummus, line. and it was a problem. But now, it, but it really is, is an in, you know incredible testament to, to all of them that it always remained about the work and, and the conditions are hard. They're long days. That day that Ben's talking about with Eloise, that was a ten-page day in a working mall. Um, and it and I had bronchitis for three fourths of the shoot. Remember um, that? You made us all get bronchitis. Yes. And you made us. <laughs> yeah, he goes. You really want to be an actor? Get bronchitis, baby. <laughs> I mean, it worked. Uh, it right though, it worked. It, totally uh, it was worked. a choice. Really, you think so? Thanks, no, Nate. But but for all of them, it's you know, it's what they bring and to they bring so much to the film, obviously, as performers. But they also all bring so much to the movie before action and after cut, and and having people who are, are supportive and who care about the material and who. You know, w when Billy Crystal stays on set while you're doing a lighting setup, because we've got a we we've got a hustle to make lunch, and he's there and he's ready. 
it inspires my entire crew to work that much harder. When, you know, when Ben goes and clears a PA's plate, it makes that PA's year. Um, and so that kind of thing with actors is so rare and so valuable and, and so appreciated. And also, when you see phenomenal, phenomenal actors show up and do tiny, tiny little scenes, uh, ju I mean, I can personally, it just makes you like step up to the want to step up to the plate in such a massive way. Not only are the leads of the film showing up and inspiring you beyond, but then someone's coming in who you've seen in a thousand different things and 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 is there for two lines and crushes it. Well, and yeah, Jill Hennessy. Yeah, Jill Hennessy. Deborah Kevin Monk, Dunn, yeah. Kevin Dunn. Your yeah. whole family is insane. Yeah. Oh, my family is Grace Gummer. It's like insane. Every role, Matt, Matt found a way to every role has someone who is just amazing, and it seems like we got a billion favors, it seems to me, because the script is just incredible people. Pretzel guy's amazing. Pretzel guy's amazing. <laughs> sometimes, the pizza sometimes, guy. sometimes you're on set and it seems like there's a competition of who can care the least. And, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, and and this was the exact opposite. Like, I, what an incredible gift to be surrounded by people. You're like, oh, I'm just, oh my gosh, they're bringing that. I'm gonna try to bring even more, and then they're gonna bring even more, and that's a joy. Uh, before we go, and again, I do want to uh, please stress to spread the word about this movie. I love this movie so much. I was actually supposed to be in Maui right now, and I postponed so that I could be oh, here tonight. What a mistake! You would have yeah. done this in Maui. <laughs> Watch it on. We'll send you a link, dear God. <laughs> no, no, no. I wanted to be here for for Christ. you guys. Skype it in or something. <laughs> Um, but before we go, I just I just have a question. I think everyone kind of wants to know from Michael. That could be there could be several Michaels here. Oh, great, um, uh, Billy. Who else besides you, hopefully returning, would you like to see host the Oscars? And just besides you, I haven't heard you get the ask for that one before. Or you could just come back and do it. Yeah, please. <laughs> Is that? No, it's first of all, it's nice to be in at an, at an event that's actually hosted. <laughs> They asked me, Jimmy Kimmel asked me, Jimmy had hosted it twice, and, and he asked me what I thought about the host list, and I said, well, this is before the show, and I said, it's like a, a trial without witnesses. <laughs> it doesn't, you get to the end faster, but yeah. it doesn't really matter. And I just think, you know, some of the best moments, which I talked about, are the, when something happens. Yep. So just think about the show in 92, Jack Palance wins for City <laughs> Slickers. Does one on push-ups. Yes. I ran with it the whole night. Yep. If there's no host, there's no show like yep. that. So I think that human factor and the tradition of Bob Hope and Johnny and everyone else who, who uh, put on a tux or a gown to host that show is missed with that. I think the opportunities to have somebody comment and tie together. There's a lot of fascinating things happen in this, mm -hmm. this, uh, this past Academy Awards that needed somebody to tie it all up, which would have been interesting. So would you do it again? I don't, uh, I don't know. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> it's, a whole different, it's a whole different world now. And, and you know, when Chris and uh, Rock and, and Steve was out there and they talked about why nobody wants to do it, and Chris said a very profound thing. He said one word, Twitter. And yep. the whole social media thing is a killer. And, and you know, when, when I did it, there were three critics that you, if you cared about critics, it was Tom Shales at the Washington Post, Janet Maslin, New York Times, and Howard Rosenberg, who was here with the LA Times. He was a great television yeah. critic. Now, there are 100 million critics, and they're all anonymous assassins. Critics, yeah. And before you, no, before you even get out, you're trending, you're not trending. I hate him, what is he wearing, what is she wearing? God, she looks terrible. Who needs that aggravation is what has happened. So I think in that case, this whole social media thing really hurts any potential for people wanting to do it. I do know Dermatala OG would love, would say wonderful <laughs> things on Twitter. And I hope that's a real account. Cause Absolutely. Like, okay, great. I cannot wait to follow it. So boo, motherfuckers, right? <laughs> Thank you.